What is going on everybody? Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video guys, we have to talk about the mayhem that went down in the stock market. We're going to be breaking down the S&P, the Dow Jones, the Nasdaq. We're going to be talking about some news regarding what caused this drop today in the markets. And we're also going to be talking about what I personally did today on the 23rd of August in 2019 in terms of my trade. So guys, if you enjoy this video, Video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. I really do appreciate it. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart community, the Discord group chat, and the Facebook group, both of those are linked down below in the description box. So, guys, let's get right into it without further ado. Starting off here with the SP 500, it dropped 75 points, it was down 2.59%. Absolutely abysmal day for the S&P 500. The NASDAQ, if we can get it here, guys, was down 200 points, down 2.64%. Absolutely abysmal day for the NASDAQ. The Dow Jones Industrial Average down 600 points, 623 to be exact, down 2.37%. And if you guys watched my video this morning, I pretty much called this out, right? We saw Jerome Powell, or we were we're expecting Jerome Powell to have a meeting at 10 a.m., which he did, Eastern Standard Time, and we were looking to see how he was going to kind of approach the topic of interest rate cuts. Was he going to flat out be like, we're cutting interest rates? How is he going to approach that, right? And the market obviously didn't take it too well, right? On top of that, the tariffs, new tariffs were slapped on $75 billion worth of uh, uh, U.S. goods from China. Those go into effect, I believe, um, in, in September through December in increments. And that also had a weight down on the market today, right? And if we go back to the S&P 500, you know, we can see exactly when the markets dropped, right? We actually gapped down this morning. We started to climb up a bit. The meeting started around here at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard. And we all know at this point, Trump is pushing for aggressive rate cuts right now, right? Pushing for aggressive rate cuts. And he's kind of going head to head with Jerome Powell. And since Jerome Powell didn't really show the demeanor of aggressive rate cuts, the market just like that, guys, in the snap of a finger, it tanked, right? It absolutely tanked. We can see here at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, right? Since we didn't get that, you know, what the demeanor we wanted from Powell in terms of the rate cuts, you know, the aggressive rate cuts as Trump wants, you know, the, oh my God, the market guys from 29.25 down to 28.76. You realize that's in 10 minutes, the S&P 500 dropped 50 points, guys. That's straight up panic. That just goes to show you how heavily right now this market, the entire stock market is relying on these rate cuts. The market is relying on these rate cuts like the rate cuts are oxygen for the market, right? That's pretty much an analogy that I like using for this. And from there, we were just downtrending for the rest of the day. We got some news and I'll show you guys an article here about Trump wanting, uh, you know, businesses in the U.S. that are doing a lot of business in China to move their facilities from China. Obviously, that's a lot harder to do than, uh, than, than, than just simply saying it, right? But but we'll see an article in a couple of minutes here that talks about that. And on the S&P 500, if we just drag out a bit here to the four-hour chart, we were talking in the Discord chat today that the uh, the support that we're looking at right now is $2,850, $2,850. We can clearly see today we got rejected at that 50 SMA, under that 50 SMA resistance here on the four-hour chart. And we're kind of trading horizontally right now. We can see the triple top here. I guess you can say that's a, a quadruple top almost, right? We got the rejection on the 8th of August, 13th of August, the 19th of August, and then finally today on the 23rd of August, and we dumped, and we can see 
It's also a triple bottom here, right? We hit a support on the 5th and 6th of August. We hit another support on the 15th of August. And now it seems like we are hovering around there. And I'm interested in seeing, you know, this upcoming week, are we going to maybe see a bit of a, um, you know, a, a bit of a consolidation here? Or is this sell-off going to continue? Me personally, guys, I think we're going to continue to sell off, to be completely honest with you guys. This news, the tariffs, the, uh, you know, the interest rates, Rates, right, all this different stuff um, that's going on right now. Trump saying for all businesses in China to leave China, businesses that do um, a lot of business there, like Apple being one of them. Um, you know, I think this is still fresh right now, and I think this can heavily affect the markets. Um, you know, heading into this upcoming week, honestly, maybe for the rest of the week, we might be seeing a sell-off similar to this that spanned across, I believe, like three, four, five days or something like that. And let's say we do get that drop below twenty-eight fifty. I think it's very possible that we get down to 2800 to about 2810 which is the next support that I am seeing here and from there guys you know if we dump down below that and into the 2700s you can see there's a window of about a 2 3% drop up to or, or rather down to the next support which is at about 2730 so at this point if we break 2850 guys which honestly again like I just said I think we're going to this upcoming week there's going to be a lot further downside for the S&P 500 and especially as the holiday season starts to roll around guys you have to realize when these tariffs actually go into effect and if they do go into effect because just because they're saying that there's tariffs now they can still take those tariffs back but let's say if they actually go into effect this is going to have a heavy heavy impact on the markets you have to realize take a look at how hard the market is dropping just on the news of the tariffs coming out in a couple of months once they actually go into effect that's going to be insane in the markets in my personal opinion and it's going to cause a lot a lot of volatility um, you know like we did talk about in this morning's video so that's kind of the breakdown right now on the S&P 500 if we take a look at the Dow and the Nasdaq it's very similar right we're, we got rejected by the 50 SMA here on the Dow under this green line, right? That was kind of a triple top as well or a quadruple top, however you do end up seeing it. And now it seems like we are holding that support at $25,500, right? And if we do end up breaking that, which again, I think there's a high probability that we do, we may be going down all the way to $24,700. And guys, that is a gap down of about 3% from this support, um, you know, at around 25,500, which that's very possible, guys, especially with the volatility in these markets and especially with how quick these markets do drop on any any you know a uh, negative piece of news that we do get right you guys clearly see the proof is in the pudding we saw the S&P drop 50 points in 10 minutes like that that's just unbelievable right so this is just a very sensitive market again like I did mention um and you know in this morning's video and for those of you guys that watched this morning's video and it helped you let me know down below in the comment section I would love to know and if you do, if you guys do like the morning videos I'll consider doing a couple more um throughout the week just let me know if there is demand for those morning videos especially you know in this rocky market that we're in I I'm open to making them if you guys want them so let me know down below but on the NASDAQ here very similar we got rejected by the 180 SMA we broke the 50 SMA support and now we're holding 74 60 7500 ish as a support which we were at a couple of weeks ago really about nine days ago on the 14th of August and back on the 6th of August as well so if we break this level we can easily gap down to the next uh, support here which is at about 7300 that's about a 1.7 to 2 percent drop from where we are now and take a look guys if we break 7300 that is where the markets, uh, in terms of uh, actually in specific the NASDAQ here, it's going to get quite ugly, right? Because 7,300, the gap down to 70 or rather 7,000, which is one of the uh, you know more prominent support levels coming up, that's going to be a gap down of around a 4.5 to 5%, which is a pretty, pretty big move. And especially if Apple, which obviously I'm sure you guys know at this point, is one of the biggest companies 
in the NASDAQ. It has a huge weight on the NASDAQ and honestly on the overall markets in general. You know, if Apple takes a huge hit, um, you know, on this news, I don't know if it will, to be completely honest with you guys. This is pure speculation right here. But if it takes a massive hit, that could drag down the NASDAQ pretty heavily, especially some of these other, um, you know, tech companies as well, if they do end up getting hit hard from this, um, you know, from, from the turmoil, from the volatility and from everything going on in the markets right now. So that's pretty much it in terms of the overall markets guys let me pull up this article very quickly to show you guys exactly what ended up happening and something pretty funny that trump did tweet um he said that uh jerome powell is on the president of china's side for not cutting the interest rates you know trump does say some crazy things on twitter i'm sure we can all agree on that but you can see here you know, stocks slumped on Friday as U.S.-China trade dispute intensified. We all know that. I already mentioned that. Okay, okay, okay. Apple, whose growth is tied to China, uh, uh, its growth is tied to the growth in China, was off nearly 4% and was the weakest Dow stock and 11th worth, uh, worst NASDAQ 100 performer. Hasbro, Alexion, and Advanced Micro Devices were the hardest hit NASDAQ stocks as well. Boeing was actually the only, or one of the only, uh, actually, yeah, it was the lone Dow winner of the day that was actually up about like 0.5% today or something like that and you guys can see here you know the Trump order announced on Twitter whose uh, enforceability is likely questionable in regards to um, you know uh, uh, China tell or uh, Trump tells the US companies to leave China. He said that came after China announced it would raise tariffs on a variety of U.S. products, including cars and farm products. He suggested that U.S. manufacturers bring jobs back to the United States. And this is the funny part here, guys. Take a look. The, the order also came after Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell told a Jackson Hole uh, conference Friday that the Fed st uh, stood ready to provide stimulus to the economy if needed. Trump didn't like the speech because it did not signal an aggressive interest rate cut and he tweeted my question is who is our biggest enemy Jay Powell or Chairman Xi Chairman Xi is Chinese President Xi uh, uh, Jinping right and it, he didn't really say that he's on his side I kind of misinterpreted that but you can see that he's really viewing Jay Powell as an enemy right now just because he's not doing what Trump wants Trump wants this aggressive aggressive 100 point basis point rate cut and and President, or rather, Jay Powell is a bit more um, conservative right now in terms of those cuts. So I would love to know what you guys um, have to think about that, right? Let me know down below in the comment section. I would love to know your just whole opinion on the stock market right now. And to talk about what I personally traded today, guys, if you watched my morning video, I called this one out to the T, and it was TVIX. And I know a bunch of you guys in the Discord chat um, did very well today, and I'm very happy for you guys. Good job if you did do well today trading um, TVIX. It did absolutely phenomenal today. It was up $3.85, nearly $4, up 23.26%. And we can see the VIX, which correlates directly to the TV. VIX ETF here, the VIX was up $3.19, $3.19, which for those of you guys that don't know, when the VIX is going up, the markets are going down, there's a lot of volatility, that is when um, TVIX is doing exceptionally well, right? And you guys can see on the one day, one minute, take a look at this, right? TVIX was downtrending from about the open of the market all the way up to when you know, uh, the speech started at 10 a.m. We started to go down, 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 down. And then 11, roughly at, roughly at 11 a.m., take a look at this pop right here. That was literally a 12% pop on TVIX. <coughs> and I was, like I mentioned in the video this morning, I was waiting until after the speech today, guys, I wanted to see the sentiment around the market. I wanted to see how stocks and the overall markets were reacting. I played it kind of smart today. And once I saw the markets take that dump, I didn't catch it perfectly at the bottom, right? That's almost impossible a lot of the time. Sure, it does happen. You can catch it at the bottom. But once the market started to dump heavily, remember that 10-minute window I talked about where the S&P dropped 50 points? Well, 
That is when I ended up building a little position and I started to buy in to TVIX. I believe it was right up here in the 17s, uh, 1710. Again, it wasn't at the bottom at 1640. I didn't catch it perfectly on this double bottom breakout. That would have been awesome, but I didn't, right? I ended up catching it at around 1720, 1725. And honestly, guys, this was one of the biggest days that I've had in a while, right? I ended up riding it up and selling off on this pullback because you have to realize guys when things move this quickly what comes into my head is stocks don't be greedy right greed is something that can crush you it can kill your account because let's say you're up six percent and let's say 10%, whatever you're up, and let's say you're being greedy, you want more and more money, more and more money, and you don't take your profits, and let's say all of a sudden that stock ETF future, whatever you're trading, let's say it dumps, and you start to lose all that profit, you're going to be playing mental games with yourself. You're going to be saying, okay, I'm going to hold it, maybe it's going to come back up, and I can recoup that profit, and then I'm going to sell. And then guess what happens, guys? It goes red, and then you're like, oh my goodness, now I'm red, I should have took the profit, when I had the profit, I should have, um, you know, just taken the profit, right? And then you might end up buying more when it's red and then it dumps even more. This is just hypothetical, right? And then you end up losing a lot of money and you blow your account and you mess up your emotions. And that's all because of being greedy, right? And since this position flew up so quickly, I was up a pretty sizable amount on the position at this point in time. You know, I ended up um, just taking the profit. I believe it was like a 6 7% profit on this pullback here, and I was very, very happy with it. And I actually ended up getting in again, guys, believe it or not, again on TVIX here on, the, uh, on this pullback here, and we popped up aggressively, and I ended up selling off uh, for another little move here. I believe it was like a smaller move. I think it was like 3 4%, and I actually posted that profit on my Instagram. So if you guys follow me on on Instagram at Stasurfes, you'll be able to see the profits that I am making on um, these, you know, these little trades that I'm doing on TVIX to kind of hedge against the market, right? Because these, I don't swing trade them, right? I'm hopping in and out whenever I, whenever I have a feeling the market is going to dump, right? When the markets are going to dump, I like trading these to hedge against my position and then buy in long stocks with the profits and really re coop um, kind of dividends. That's kind of my strategy, right? I'm a dividend investor as well as a trader. And to be honest with you guys, I bought five shares of Johnson & Johnson today um, because I'm viewing Johnson & Johnson as a stock that is not recession proof, no stock is truly recession proof, but I think this stock does very, very well and it has a track history of doing very well and paying increasing dividends even through a recession. And I'm viewing this more of a um, safer quote unquote stock in terms of, you know, times when the markets are in turmoil. So I saw the big dump on J&J today. It was down about like 3% at one point, And I literally took those profits from TVIX and I ended up buying five shares of Johnson and Johnson um, today, right? I ended up buying like I think it was like six hundred or it was like six hundred thirty dollars uh, of Johnson and Johnson at about like a hundred. Literally, I bought it like five minutes before um, the market closed. No joke, right? So that is what I ended up doing today, right? And that's kind of my strategy. I'm taking my profits and I'm funneling them into dividend paying um, um, stocks for the most part. Of course, I'm buying growth stocks as well. I'm a younger guy. I'm putting some, I'm putting a lot of my money in growth stocks and in companies that I think can do very well over time. But I do like buying some large cap blue chip dividend paying companies that I feel a bit safer in than some of these growth stocks in terms of a time period where there could be a recession coming, which I believe is right now, right? So that's what I ended up doing um, today. Um, in terms of my trades and, and buying a bit more stock in Johnson & Johnson. I would love to know what you guys ended up doing down below in the comment section. So... Guys, that's pretty much it for the video, right? I don't want to make this video too long. I want to keep uh, the, the stocks that I'm personally trading and watching. Um, I want to talk about those in Sunday's video. So if you want to see that, feel free to uh, go down below and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, drop a comment and let me know some stocks and ETFs that you guys want me to talk about in the next video. So, uh, or rather on Sunday's video. So, 
really guys the gist of it is the market's volatile i expect it to come or continue to be volatile heading into this upcoming week and tvix sqqq spxs all of these etfs here um j nug as well you know if gold does well if gdx continues to do well which it did very well today um if this continues to pop j nug can do com uh, very well uh exceptionally well this upcoming week as well and that's kind of my strategy and philosophy heading into this upcoming week not really looking to trade any large cap tech stocks right now maybe if they see a bounce back i might day trade those but at this point with the volatility i'm seeing a lot more potential in tvix and uvxy so that's pretty much it if you enjoyed the video guys feel free to go down below hit that like button i really do appreciate that it provides um really it tells me that you're enjoying these videos and you want me to continue to make these videos and if you want to see further content content for me subscribe to the channel and drop a comment down below let me know any thoughts that you guys have as well as stocks and etfs you want me to talk about in the next video so i'll pre i appreciate you guys watching i'll catch you all in the next video peace out